Wampus Cat has always, you know, it's, it's been Matt and I, his songs, my songs, you know, we write most of the music that um, that we play and then there's there's also what we call the honorary Wampus Cat and uh, we'll be in the middle of a show somewhere and uh, inevitably someone will approach the stage with some, you know, bones or a harmonica or a drum and and so we'll just invite them up on stage and at that point they're an honorary Wampus Cat. <laughs> mother of five daughters. Three of Three of our daughters are high school age and they started dating a little bit and had questions and um, a few heartbreaks in between and I, you know I was really um, pretty frustrated with what I was hearing coming out of Nashville. I, I uh, n no insult insults Nashville by any means, I just didn't like the lyrics. I didn't think they were uh, giving a good um, example or putting good ideas into young people's minds about relationships. And um, our daughter had had become pretty serious uh, with a, with a young fellow, and uh, you know was asking those typical questions. You know, how is this love? Is this what you know what it should be like? And uh, um, I recognized that you know love is you can't put it in a box, but there's there's um, certainly aspects to it that are identifiable, and that's more about the true nature and the heart of, of, of people, um, commitment and loyalty and trust and integrity. Um, those are the foundations of love, not sexual attraction. <laughs> the song talks about love and the concept of love and the video kind of showcases what the perceptions from a female perspective may be of what love is through the ages. It starts with the medieval knight in shining armor in kind of a dreamlike sequence, then it turns into the princess, and eventually the wedding gown, and of course we have segments of an older couple. When I, when I started thinking about Bathsheba, I started thinking about um, my childhood and the dreams I had for my marriage and my life when I would grow up and. Uh, we lived in the Willamette Valley. My dad had a had a farm, was and the and of course everywhere in the Willamette Valley is covered in Queen Anne's lace. And my mom, mama, <laughs> mama used to uh, cut the Queen Anne's lace, and she'd show me Queen Anne right in the middle. I was imagining um, those days, you know, and spinning that Queen Anne lace, and just thinking how beautiful it was, and how I wanted to be her. I wanted to be the queen <laughs> in the middle of the lace and I thought how much it looked like a wedding dress. And I was spinning that Queen Anne's lace thinking about the wedding dress and I thought I can just see Ruby in this wedding dress with you know apple blossoms falling down in her beautiful red hair and and uh, feeling like the center of the universe, feeling like the queen of it all, feeling like it's her wedding day. and and how how wonderful it is to be solely loved by that one person, solely supported by that, that person. And that's what really gave me the idea. And it, it just kind of grew into, you know, Johnny and June, how much they loved each other, you know, and and uh, how John Wayne, he, he was the guy, you know, he was, and, and it just built from there. We shot it entirely in and around Silver Lake, Oregon, mostly on location at the family's ranch. Uh, it was very minimalist. Uh, I didn't have any crew with me. It was just me filming, shooting, editing, everything. And I wanted to keep it very genuine to what the family is all about. The band and the ranch are so intertwined that we wanted to make sure that we really showcased what that was all about. But I, I had never actually had the opportunity to see something uh, of mine truly come to life, and so it, it was it was really interesting. It was it was fun um, to to uh, get to work behind the scenes, you know, as we were <laughs> bumping into each other and trying to create different camera angles and working with the makeup and working with the hair and getting the girls to really epitomize what was in my mind's eye. But then, for me, it was almost like being in a dream that I, 
I was actually going to see one of my songs come to life. Not only had we were we able to capture the music um, with the working with the different artists and, and creating, you know, the embodiment of what was in my mind, was audibly being able to to experience it, but to actually for once not sing backup and not be behind, but but really be uh, honored for the you know the creation that that had come out of my little pea brain. <laughs> right. I just need. Yeah, your lip sync to match up the recording is, is the problem. So that's why we need to crank this as loud as it can be so you can hear yourself. You don't need to necessarily sing loud because we're not recording audio on your side of things. We're just recording sample audio so I can digitally sync it up with the master recording. Yeah, it was, it was great, yeah, but very, very hard at the same time. But yeah, take after take of just screwing up the lyrics or tripping over rocks or my own dress or... <laughs> drumming my guitar wrong, throwing wrong chords, I mean, it was a lot of fun. I can't wait to do it again. The most difficult shot was the wedding dress shot. And I was petrified about this because Rachel said that this was what she had dreamed about, this is what she had envisioned, and if we couldn't get this shot right, we just shouldn't do the video at all. Can you, I have to look at the camera, so let okay. me know when I'm about to hit the edge. All right. Okay, three, two, one. One more step. You're done. Gabby! Yeah. Uh, I didn't want to create any shadows on Ruby Wilson, their oldest daughter, who was portraying the bride-to-be. And that meant having to get a vertical shot, I had to stand on a bench holding the camera out as far as I could, looking straight down. That was also compounded by the fact that it was a really bright day, and Ruby couldn't keep her eyes open because we had her staring up directly into the sun. Now, I couldn't see where I was walking, and we had set up a bench for me to walk across. A dolly really wasn't feasible for this particular shot. So I had to walk while staring at the camera, so I had no idea where I was going and thinking I might fall off the bench. So we had Rachel sit at the end of the bench, and I knew to stop once I walked to the end and kicked her. Yeah, I got kicked in the butt a lot. <laughs> we did probably 30 to 40 different segments of the band performing their own song, which, uh, you know, if you listen to the same song, even though it's a great song, after hearing it 30 or 40 times in a row, it starts to get on your nerves just a little bit. Everyone was so generous with their time. You know, it, you can't create these things without everyone's heart behind it. And everyone gave. As rushed as we were to get everything in, I think it turned out just great. I had I had some some fears that it wouldn't it wouldn't come out the way I, I had imagined and I just I couldn't believe it. It was so amazing that it, it not only took my concepts and and my hopes and dreams for it, but made it just even that much better with, with two minds working on it and, and two people conceptualizing what it could be. I I cried a few times <laughs> when I watched it, I cried. Oh, do you love me for